Henry Lowengard again with the iridescent nightingale that I've been playing with since I got it for my birthday, my own birthday present. And I'll turn the camera down a little bit and I'll come back a little and move the microphone so you can hear me. Um, here it is. It's set up. I've changed the chords yet again. It now has um, different string schedules to accommodate the kind of chord changes that I like a lot, which is uh, diatonic scale over here and diatonic scale over here that is a flatted third above. Um, that means you have both the major and the minor of the same chord and a lot of the same voicings and stuff happens and transitions do it in the kind of music I like to change. So I'm not really a circle of fifths person in this particular scheme. Uh, I just stay in one key, but it uh, has both a major and a minor mode feeling to them, uh, which is different from the relative major uh, and the relative minors. The relative minors, blah, 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 blah. What am I talking about? Oh, also, I put a drone of the bass string in every chord, which I've also done on other harps. Uh, so that uh, because I only have 16 strings here, it helps thicken it up. I also don't really have much of a span. This is two octaves, but really the bottom octave only has six notes in it. The top has ten. Um, so that means that I don't have a lot of fill-in on the bottom, like it used to have. It used to have two full seven-note octaves with one on the top, uh, seven, uh, seven note scales. But I needed those extra notes to go and do this uh, transition. So here are the chords. <laughs> And there's this suspended uh, suspended five that's sitting between the two, which is usually a very good transition because you go. Something like that. I've done for years bouncing between these two scales, um, which is pretty delightful. It shows up in a lot of pop music that is not like folky music, mostly. Folky music, sometimes they will sneak over into the next door neighbor on the circle of fifths, but they often don't jump all the way to the other side of the scale. <laughs> The other uh, thing is these, uh, this part of it, the what I consider like the, the, the bass part of this is all these notes have are using my cut only half a notch trick in here so that, for example, this C, that's a C major seventh. It's not a C, it's a G. No. Uh, if I move the if I move the bridge around, it can be sort of. Uh, one of a number of choices of scales, but right now it's in G. Uh, so this G major seventh, but if I push it a little harder, that major seventh disappears. It's a pretty subtle effect because I don't have a lot of strings, so mostly I'm adding and subtracting just one string in here. But a lot of these chords, because I don't have a lot of strings, just don't have a lot of reinforcement in them uh, and are basically one note different from each other. So I try to give it a little more uh, choices when I'm strumming. <laughs> Sounds very banjo-like, even though clearly this is not a banjo. Um.
one. I can't get, can't get exactly what I need out of it, but um, it's pretty close. And of course, I only have 16 strings, which I was complaining about before. Um, I may continue my research by doing things like adding um, uh, temporary bridges to be able to do things like bring this up. I don't want to break this string at the top here. It's pretty, pretty tight. So I might want to put an artificial bridge in here to do this other trick for the drone, which is to bring it up to the two instead of the one. Um, so instead of doing, instead of doing, we put one of these in it, an A in this case. Not a bad sound. Um, Pinch melodies, harder to do here because you don't have the notes. You just don't have them. I can do that over here. Pretty sparse. Other other kinds of scales, some of them are more filled out than others. It's a problem. But that's uh, that's my new guy. That's how it's going. Of course you can do the two finger clean thing here. And in this case, this is a power chord. Just the one and the five because this is the major. This is the minor. So that can start some stuff off. So there's, you know, the usual auto harp tricks that you can do. Oh, the other thing is, take a look. What's going on here? These buttons are way up here. Let's me come down here, which is a million times more comfortable than crossing your hands. And also gives me lots of room for timbral differences, like. As you can see, I'm using my snake bite pick here. Um, it just means that it's not super long banging on the thing, and uh, it's a little smaller. It's a little more useful on a, on a typical shaped auto harp than this. So if I want to play a minor scale that we recognize as a minor scale. button but it still sounded pretty good yeah anyway uh, more later talk to you next time bye